Welcome to the Alchemy for Authors podcast. I'm your host, Joe Bueller. If you're an author, aspiring author, writer, or wordsmith, you're in the right place. Join me every week as I chat with authors and industry professionals and share my own experiences about using manifestation and mindset practices to supercharge our writing lives. We'll explore ways to overcome writer's block and imposter syndrome. We'll find motivation and inspiration to get our butts in the chair and our stories written. And most importantly, we'll embark on creating lives and livings doing what we love. If you've ever dreamt of a prolific, wealthy, happy or healthy author career or writing practice, then this show is for you. So let's dive into Alchemy for Authors. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to another episode of Alchemy for Authors. Today's episode is a continuation of last week's interview with the wonderful Monica Hay, part two, if you will. And if you haven't listened yet to episode 13, Manifestation and Mindset for Authors with Monica Hay, then I highly recommend you do so. Monica is a writer of fantasy fiction living in Portland, Oregon. She's also a writing coach who infuses spirituality into her coaching practice to help her clients create their dream writing lives. Monica also plans to launch Law of Attraction and ADHD coaching later this year. So in last week's episode, Monica shared how authors can benefit from using mindset and the Law of Attraction to bring themselves closer to their writing goals. In this week's episode, we shift focus to discussing being a writer with ADHD. So like myself, Monica was diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. She shares her journey to diagnosis, how she's reframed ADHD as an author superpower, and the productivity and focus hacks she uses to get her books written. Even if you don't have ADHD, I think you're going to enjoy this episode. Everyone has those moments. We're getting our butts in the chair and our words on the page is hard work. And this is where Monica has some simple but really cool tricks to push through that'll work for you too. So when you're ready, grab a cuppa, find a comfy chair, sit back and enjoy the show. All right, I'm going to change directions because I am dying to hear more about your ADHD journey. Yeah. If you're willing to share that and how that impacts on your writing or manifestation or just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I like to call my ADHD a superpower because I like to, it's almost like I'm, you know, reclaiming it, but I have had issues with my executive function since I was very young. So I was tested for disabilities as a child back in like the late nineties, you know, early two (laughs) thousands when it wasn't, you know, women with ADHD wasn't really a Mm. thing back then. It was a lot of, you know, like young white boys which is there's nothing wrong with them being diagnosed I'm glad they were getting the help they needed but it wasn't a lot of girls because girls tend to present differently Mm -hmm. I wasn't acting out in class you know I wasn't doing those kinds of things I was just like struggling academically I didn't know how to like manage my time I was very hyperactive at home like I didn't do my homework I would just go outside and play all all night (laughs) you know (laughs) I wasn't wasn't disciplined and so I really struggled in high school and college and finally, funny enough, TikTok when I was watching that during the Mm -hmm. pandemic, because, you know, hashtag TikTok during the pandemic, (laughs) I started seeing these like talks about ADHD and I had been diagnosed with depression, anxiety several years before Mm -hmm. and thought like, oh, this is just going to be my life. Like I'm going to have to be struggling with like depression, anxiety all my life. And it's, and it did make it hard to manifest because I would have these like down weeks of not Mm -hmm. having, not being able to get to like the high vibe state that I like to be in, which sounds very strange saying it out loud. But for me, it's more of just like being level and like being able to access good and happy thoughts. So I finally realized, oh, maybe I just have some kind of executive function disorder. Maybe I have ADHD. So it took me some time to find a psychiatrist. I don't know if any of you listening are living in the US, but you know, it's a trash fire here when it comes mm-hmm. to the healthcare system. <laughs> so I eventually found a psychiatrist and that psychiatrist was actually not great at all. She did not listen to the thing I said. Mm-hmm. So if you're listening to this and you've had a bad psychiatrist, you are not alone. I feel yeah. you. So I did get a new one and he diagnosed me with the first moment we we hung out. Like on, wow. he was just like, yeah, you clearly like, and the thing is, I had gone to like a very 
you know, quote unquote, elite university. I had Mm -hmm. been at this point where people thought I was so smart and that I was fine because I, I was masking, I was Mm -hmm. masking all of my symptoms and everybody thought, Oh, you don't, you don't have ADHD. You went to like UC Berkeley in California. (laughs) Like you have a master's. How can you have ADHD? Because I barely survived (laughs) doing those things. (laughs) So eventually I, yeah, when I met with him, he put me on, we tried some different medications and I ended up on the really good medication and it's like night and day. My meds have like given me access to a life I never thought I could have where like I can actually focus without, you know, struggling and like sitting down and beating my head against the computer, wondering like, why isn't my brain working today? It, I have the access to my, my brain working the way that it, I'd like it to work. And it's funny with, with ADHD and writing, I have a lot of accommodations I give myself. So first of all, I put my phone in safe. I literally Ooh. stick my phone in my safe and lock it and put a bunch of stuff on top of my safe so that I cannot access my phone. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, this is cool. I'm, I'm taking note of these tips because I don't know if my listeners know, but I'm very new on my own ADHD journey, having just been diagnosed in January and very similar to you, I thought I had, I just had incredibly bad anxiety for the majority of my life. Yep. And it's amazing now that I'm getting my ADHD sorted, that anxiety is just not there or yeah. barely there. It, it's insane. Right. Yeah, yeah. My depression and anxiety issues, like they, they still can happen, but mm. they're not, they're not even close to the same level they used to be. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. But I it's love amazing. that idea. You put your phone in the same. Yep. Okay. So I have cool. two phones. I yeah. accommodate myself with two phones and one phone is a regular phone that works mm-hmm. through any, like any other phone. And I put that one in the safe. And then I have my second phone, mm-hmm. um, which is only for things that fill me up. So for example, I have music on there. I have podcasts. I have audiobooks. I have this like basically apps that help me with writing or like whatever else I want to be doing, but it does not distract me because there's no Instagram. There's no TikTok. There's literally Ah. not anything that's going to distract me. I do have one app that I can scroll, but it's a law of attraction app. And every time I scroll through it, it's inspiring. (laughs) So I have two phones and what I do, it's, I I have a very specific routine. I put my second phone in my safe or the regular phone in my safe Mm. at night around like nine o'clock, usually maybe eight o'clock. And then I can't access it all night. And then my husband goes to bed much earlier than I do. And so I don't want to annoy him. He goes through my safe. Yeah. And the next day I don't look at my phone. I leave it in there until like 3 or 4 p.m. most days, unless I have like errands. I have to like go places and that's usually a different kind of day. But on writing days or days that I'm just working, I don't look at my phone until like 3 or 4. I don't take it out of the safe. I don't do anything and I literally have to do that because the dopamine hit that I get mm. when I'm on Instagram or anything like that is mm-hmm. so extreme that like, I literally have to take away the distraction. I have yeah. to make it extremely hard to access the distraction. So that's one of the biggest tips I recommend is making it yeah. so that you can access what you need. So like audiobooks, whatever else you love to do on your mm-hmm. phone, maybe, but having the distractions on a different device. That is so fascinating. I've never heard of anybody do that. Totally makes sense. Gives me yeah, the absolute I shivers. I'm like, what? Yeah, I, I heard about it from a person who, I don't think she has ADHD, but she mm. um, she has like writing hack videos. Ah. Her name is Jessica Brody. And she's uh, oh, like she a just, YA author. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I have two phones. And like, I think her second, she does it mostly so that she doesn't which I actually think is a very good idea. She doesn't like look at email or Instagram Mm -hmm. or anything until after she's written for the day because she doesn't, she says, well, I don't know what's on the internet that day. I don't know what bad news I might see. I don't know like what emails I've gotten and I don't want to put my mental health at risk by looking at those things before I write. Such a good tip. Such a good tip. Which is why I don't, I don't look at my phone. I don't look at my email. I don't look at my Instagram. I literally have the app freedom on my computer and I just turn freedom on for 30 minutes or something like that. So I can't access those things. And I just, I'm literally just forced to write. Like, Ooh, I love that. It kind of terrifies me because you know, like, I'm like, Oh, that's such a good idea. Can I do it? Ooh, I don't know. I'm at this point, I'm a little bit addicted to my phone that dopamine hit. 
Instagram yep. reels is my thing. Like same. not, not making I, them, but watching them, I can get lost for hours and that. Same like, girl, same. I, it, I won't lie. I got withdrawals for the first week, massive mm. withdrawals. I was like, what do I do with myself? Oh my God. Like, how do I, how do I move forward? Like I was getting literal addiction withdrawals. Yeah. And then it sort of just stopped. And I was like, oh, I, I have all this time that I didn't realize I had. And so it's been life-changing. I highly recommend it to anybody who is like struggling with yeah. you know, their phones. The reason I have a safe that I use is because it makes it really hard to get it out of my safe. Like if <laughs> yes. I put it anywhere yeah. that it was easier to get yeah. it, it would be like game over. Yeah. 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 And we've got to do these things. Can you tell me a little bit about the Freedom app? What's that? I haven't. Yeah. Heard so Freedom um, is similar to Forest. So there's two, mm-hmm. there's a few different distraction apps. And I, I do have Forest. Forest is where you, you press plant and a tree is growing. But if you pick mm-hmm. up your phone or look at any other apps, your tree dies. I've got so something I love similar. That app to yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only problem with Forest is that if you like, you know, suddenly like want to listen to Spotify you can't do that unless you're Mm. on your computer or like if you want to like listen to something you can't access that app so that's why I have two phones freedom is does cost money I'm not quite sure how much it costs but it's where you can specifically block certain apps so for example you can block like Instagram but you don't what you won't block like Pinterest or something like you can block Mm. specific apps on it and you can also use it on your computer and so that's what I do when I pick up my computer to write. I usually um, turn on a session for however long you want. And then you can't access things. It'll like, when you try to access, it'll be like, you are free. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to work or something like that. Oh my gosh. That's cool. Yeah. I, yeah, I have something must be very similar to Forest. It's Flora. So I have that on my phone because I tend to, to have my phone beside me when I'm writing, but when I'm sitting down to write, you know, I'll set a timer on this app. So it might be, I want to do a half hour sprint just to get into it or an hour or something like that. And then once the app's going, if you stop or, you know, if you touch your phone, go on anything else, you're going to kill a tree. And so, you know, and there's a little bit of that incentive to have this beautiful garden grow up with the more times that you, the more times that you, you know, fulfill these time things without, touching your phone so yeah I found that really useful yep. now what's your recommendation for getting your butt in the chair to actually write when you've got ADHD mm, yeah it's tough honestly I usually let myself spend a couple minutes of my day before I sit down to write cleaning um mm. I I'm one of the ADHD years who, because I'm more hyperactive, I like to clean and like to have my space really tidy. I'm also just like in general, a clean freak. I think mm-hmm. that's a genetic thing because my sister's the same way, but I love a clean space and I let myself kind of like clean the house through the cat litter a little bit. And then I'm like, okay, if I write, if I sit down to write, I'm going to give myself this thing as a reward. Mm-hmm. I have to reward myself basically. And the way yeah. I reward myself is through letting myself organize something that I know I needed to organize for a while or like letting myself have, you know, some kind of treat or something like that. Your reward system is very personal. Like everybody's mm-hmm. different. Yeah. You have to find the rewards that work for you. I try to have really large rewards for if I finish a book. Yeah. Um, I'll be like, oh, I'm going to go on a trip or something like that. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. But I, I have to reward myself in order to do it. And I also really recommend breaking things into smaller tasks. Cause I think mm-hmm. the problem with ADHD brains or just even being a writer without ADHD, it's it's very difficult to see a lot of progress when you're writing novels because you don't write the end every day. You're yeah. not writing like yeah. the end, like all the time, unless you're a very quick writer. And so yeah. it's easy for us to think like, oh, I, you know, I only wrote like 500 words. That's still 500 words. That's a lot. Like you yeah. wrote 500 words, but you have to break into smaller tasks in order to feel like your movement is going forward. So for me, I'll usually, my goal is usually about 1000 words a day, um, depending on where I am in a project. Sometimes I get more and that's great. And sometimes it's hard to get to the 1000, but breaking things into smaller tasks is like one of the biggest things that's helped me. I still struggle with it because it's easy to like, you know, think like, oh, I can't wait till I get to the end. But I actually have a hack where I like to like write letters to myself of the scenes I'm excited to write. 
And sometimes that helps me keep going because I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to write that scene and like get go for it. And like that can feel very inspiring. That is cool. I haven't heard of anyone doing that, but that's really cool. I like that. Yeah, it's I, a way of like giving myself future dopamine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I get to yeah, do this soon. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's it. I think is you've got to find those things that are going to give you dopamine to see it through. For yep. for me, one of my writing hacks is to um have a playlist made up for my story with you know music that just puts me in the vibe of the story, and I usually do that on Spotify. Same. And then if I'm know that I've got to do some writing, but I'm just procrastinating, can't get my butt in the chair, then listening to that will quite often get mm. me in the groove and gets me excited. And I can't always write with it in the background, but sometimes listening to it first will just give me that hit that I need to to get right. excited and to and to do it too. So yeah, sometimes oh. I scroll through Pinterest and I look at some of my like, mm. you know, my current like boards for certain projects and I get excited looking at those and I think, oh, I'm yeah. excited to write this or I like love this part. I, and that sometimes can be very inspiring when I'm exhausted in the morning. I'm not a morning person. I like to scroll through Pinterest as a way to scroll through things that are inspiring to me because my Pinterest is always like law of attraction stuff and yeah. like character art, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's oh, very that's fun. Cool. That's cool. Do you think? having ADHD has helped you in any way with your writing? I do. I think my ADHD brain has made it so I can literally empathize with any kind of person in the world. Mm. And I think I was listening to one of your episodes where you talk about being very empathetic. Mm -hmm. I think that's just how ADHDers are because we struggled so much that like we, not to say that people without ADHD aren't empathetic, but I think yeah. my empathy comes a lot from the fact that I have struggled a lot academically and like mm -hmm. in my personal life and I'm very forgiving of people because of that like I understand like the problems people face and how difficult it is to like <laughs> to live life <laughs> um and do it well as an adult any age really but you know hashtag adulting is not fun to always no. but <laughs> no. you know I, I do think my ADHD has honestly helped in a lot of ways because I I can write about anyone in a lot of ways I can I can really put myself in people's in people's shoes a lot of the times mm -hmm. it's kind of like when I watch a sappy show you know yeah. like I'm always putting myself in the character's shoes and I think that's a big strength like the empathy is a big strength I think another strength is like I you know I know a lot of authors who are such massive introverts that they can't imagine like having to do the business part but I have a lot of strengths in that, you know, I, I have a lot of strengths when it comes, like, I'm a very versatile person, basically. Yeah. And I think my ADHD has helped with that. It's made it so that I can do a lot of different things that some people might think is awful, like the business part of, oh, I post on Instagram or like marketing myself, like those things might feel cringy to some people, but you know, I don't mind doing them. Like I, I'm very personable. Like I'm able to shift almost into like different roles very easily. That's cool. I like that. And I have to say, I absolutely adore your Instagram account. Like, and it, well, it's just so beautifully curated. So Thank everybody you, needs to go my designer out. Taylor out there. If you're listening well, to this. It, it's absolutely gorgeous. And, and your color scheme in that, and you put out so many reels in that and they're just, they're fantastic. I love watching Instagram reels. I am one of those people who are, have still working on getting the confidence to actually put myself on the camera with that. That's not something that naturally appeals to me personally, but I love watching other people do it. And yeah, so I really, really have enjoyed your Instagram. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I used to be more active on Instagram, but I mean, I, I do love social media and there's so many great things about it. I've met so many friends there, but I also have to have like really specific boundaries because mm -hmm. of my ADHD. Like I'm, yeah. you know, I don't let myself scroll for very long usually, or if I do let myself scroll for very long, I say, okay, well, you know, like that was a couple hours, but you know, it's okay. I try to be gentle, but the boundaries have to be in place. Otherwise it, I can go to, you know, the depths. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and nothing gets done and the day goes by. I totally yeah. understand. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, I do also find that Instagram, you know, it can be weird when the algorithm, the algorithm can be very tricky. And mm. so I, I think it's easy for people to get discouraged and to not want to post. But when I post, I try to just tell myself like the people who need to see this are going to see this. And like, yeah, 
yeah. you know, I'm glad that they'll see it and I'm glad that it'll hopefully make their day better. Yeah. The key really to living, you know, lives that we love is just to have fun with it. As soon yes. as things start to be too much of a chore, you're just taking that energy away. Like everything's got to yep. be fun and you can't always be about, you know, the algorithms and the numbers and, and, right. and all of that. Sure, that's part of it, but it's got to be fun. It's got to be right. Fun. I mean, we take ourselves so seriously in mm. life. And I, I think like, yes, life is serious, but at the same time, like none of us are getting out of here alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, we're all going to die. Like, you know, whatever, <laughs> like just have have fun. Like when you're writing, like who gives a shit if your, if your words are crap, but if you think it's crap, like just have fun. I I like to think of myself when I write as like the person that was 15, that was having so much fun writing that manuscript. That was basically a Harry Potter fanfic in certain ways. Yeah. I just had so much fun and I didn't have those like adulting thoughts of, Oh, is this good enough? Is this going to sell? You know, like I didn't think about any of that. I was literally just doing it for the joy. Yes. And, and we do that, that as that kids. Joy. Yeah. Yes, we do. My gosh, all the things I, I created when I was a child. I know. And then we lose that as we get older. And I think we need to kind of go back and embrace that. There doesn't need to be a reason behind everything that we do. No. We can just do things for the, the hell of it, just for the yeah, fun of it. just uh, paint something beautiful yeah. or even not that doesn't look that beautiful to you just because you love doing it. It's fun. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Ah. Oh. I have just had such a ball chatting with you. I'm just very aware of the time here. So I just want to, is there anything else that you want to share with the audience or any, I don't know, favorite piece of advice or anything? Oh man, favorite piece of advice. I think my favorite thing to think about is for people who struggle to sit down and write, Mm -hmm. I would say that at the heart of your avoidance of writing and procrastination is your denial of process, your denial of like your messy process. And this, this like thinking that like, Oh, I must think about the finished product. It's like this toxic finished product thinking that we are always thinking about because that's how capitalism works. Right. It's like you sell the book when it's finished. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're always thinking about that, but instead of thinking about that, just embrace the messy middle. Yes. Embrace the process. Cause that's like really where the magic is going to happen is, Oh, this scene that I'm writing and like embracing, just playing with it, embracing the characters, whatever you're writing, just almost as if it's just you and the words and the story and not worrying about the rest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Love it. All right. Okay. So I know that my listeners are going to be wanting to follow you or touch base with you and everything after listening to this. So can you just tell everybody where they can connect with you? Yeah. So my Instagram is Monica Hay author. So M-O-N-I-C-A-H-A-Y author. And then I don't really have much of a Facebook presence. I admit my website is just monicahay.com. My DMs are basically open all the time on Instagram and you can email me at coaching at monicahay.com as well. That's cool. And you'll be opening up your coaching again later on this year? Yeah. For anybody listening, if you want to reach out to me, I can open for whoever's listening. And if, just let me know that you listen to the podcast. And then I'll be probably opening up at some time this summer. Yeah. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much. It has been such a blast chatting with you. And I really hope we can do this again sometime because... Agreed. Wow. I love doing this. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much takeaways from today's episode. One, if you're an author with ADHD, focus on your strengths. Maybe you have a greater sense of empathy that can help you with character development. Or maybe your ability to shift roles easily helps you wear the many hats that being an author and running an author business requires. So focus on the positives. Two, leave looking at emails or social media until after you've written. Three, Find ways to limit distractions on your phone or computer. Consider physically locking your phone away during writing time or use an app like Freedom, Forest or Flora to gamify or focus your productivity. Four, reward yourself for writing milestones. Find rewards that work for you and use them as incentives to get your writing done. Five, break your writing tasks down into small tasks you're getting those dopamine hits from completion more often. Six, 
Get excited to write. Consider writing letters to yourself about the scenes you're excited to write. Create a Spotify playlist for your work in progress or Pinterest mood or character boards for your story. Seven, remember the key to living lives we love is to have fun. So have fun with your writing. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I've had so much fun chatting with Monica and sharing all her insights with you. And if you haven't already, make sure you go back and you listen to the previous episode, episode 13, where Monica takes a deep dive into using the law of attraction to bring you closer to your writing goals. Ways to connect with Monica and myself will be in the show notes. And I would love to hear if you're a writer with ADHD and what your go-to writing hacks are. If you've enjoyed this episode, I'd be super grateful if you'd leave a review or share my podcast with someone else who might benefit from it. I want every writer, every author to know that their words matter, their writing matters, and their dreams are possible. So I hope to inspire them to take the steps to supercharge their writing lives. By rating, reviewing, and sharing this podcast, you help me make that a reality. So I'm wishing you a wonderful week ahead and happy writing.